to another Blender tutorial. I'm Leo from MediaWay and today I'm going to share some of the secrets to putting together a photorealistic interior scene in just a few minutes. We're going to create this cool ocean view apartment scene. I'm going to show you how to make a quick to render glass material, how to block out interior floors and walls, where to get free models and materials, plus how to add volume fog to get a really nice look to your render. Let's get started. Okay, here we are in Blender in a new scene. We're actually going to leave everything. I'm just gonna select it all, grab it, press X, and just move it out of the way. We're gonna use all of these three things a bit later in the tutorial. First thing we'll do is press Shift A, add in a cylinder. If you just click the little roll out here, we're going to set the radius to three meters, uh, the depth to 0.5 meters, and the vertices we'll leave at 32 for now. This is going to be the floor of the scene that we start with. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is add the glass in. So Shift A again, we're going to add in another cylinder, but this time we're going to reduce, we're going to increase the height to let's say 3.5 meters. We're going to reduce the number of vertices. Let's make it 12. And the radius, we'll just bring it slightly in. So maybe, yeah, 2.9 meters radius. Okay, so press G to grab, Z to move on the Z axis. This is going to be the glass. So what we're going to do next, we're going to delete some other faces. So if you press tab to go into edit mode, press three to make sure you're on face select. It's up here. The shortcuts for these, one for vertex, two for edges, three for faces. It's good to know. Um, we're going to select the top of the face, delete the face. And we're going to delete, in fact, hold down shift, just select some of these. I think think we'll yeah yeah let's take off these X delete the faces so we're left with five uh, five window faces there okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a glass material in here so if you click down here click new material we'll call it glass now if you click onto the shading tab you can see we've already got a basic uh, material set up Glass can sometimes take a long time to render and introduce a lot of fireflies. So for here, we're just gonna introduce a basic glass material that is gonna be mostly transparent, but it's just going to show the reflections in the room. So we'll start by taking our principal BSDF. Let's just move it over here a little bit. The metallic, it we use for reflection. We'll leave that about, about three. Get rid of the specular, get rid of the roughness. The sheen tint, clear coat, we'll switch those all off. Transmission has to be at one. That'll let the light straight through. Leo from the future here. Don't forget to set index of refraction to one as well. So the next thing we're going to do is add in, so it's shift A to add in another shader. We're gonna search for a transparent BSDF. Click that there. We're gonna shift A to add another. We'll search for a mix shader. And we'll drop that there. And we'll also add in a light path. And we'll pop that up out the way here. So what we're going to do is just connect all the dots, really. So transparent BSDF goes to the top of the mix shader. Principal BSDF goes to the bottom of the mix shader. The shader output goes to the surface. And the, the, from the light path, the one that says is camera ray is going to be the factor. That's the glass shader setup. Hop back to the layout tab. Let's start giving these some names. So this is going to be the glass window. This one here is the floor. Now, if you press seven on your number pad, you get into top view and we'll grab the default cube here. And we're gonna make the default cube into some pillars. So S to scale, scale it to roughly this size. What size is that? That's about 60 centimeters. I think that's about right. Seven to pop into top view. Well, no, in fact, what we'll do, 
Press G to grab, and if you hold, press Shift and Z, it constrains it on the Z axis. Pop it in the corner of the glass here. And then press S to scale, Z to scale on the Z axis. G to grab, Z for the Z axis. And we're gonna pop it just about there. This is gonna be one of the pillars for the supports. Press, uh, press Control A and just apply all your transforms. So then you see the scales reset. This is just good practice for when you're adding materials. Seven for top view. Shift D to duplicate. We're gonna grab another one, pop it over there. R to rotate, G to grab. And we're just gonna grab this. So G to grab and Shift Z. Shift Z to move it, but not on the Z axis. And we just pop that there. Seven. Shift D again to duplicate it again. R to rotate, let's just grab that, pop it back. That's, that's gonna be a little doorway here to walk through. Okay, so we've kind of got the basic shape of the room set up now. We'll shift A to add another cube. Seven for top view, S to scale. Shift Z to not scale on the Z axis. S to scale on the Y axis. S to scale on the X axis make it a bit wider. This is going to be basically the rest of the of the building. R to rotate, we'll have it slightly angled like that. And S, to, S and Z to scale on the Z axis because we don't want the floor to be too thick. And we'll just leave it underneath there. So that basically is going to fill out the rest of the floor plan. Control A to apply all your transforms again. Okay, with the floor plane selected, press tab to hop into, the, hop into edit mode. Press Control R for a loop cut. If you move to the side there, you'll see which where you want the loop cut to go. So we'll just click there once, and then we'll just move it to about here. This is gonna be the back wall. And we're gonna do the same over here. Control R, and we're just gonna put a point here. In fact, we could do one on the other side as well if you want to, okay? So now three for face select mode, press, just click all of the, the corners there. Press E to extrude and just go up. So you've covered the back wall. We'll leave the ceiling for a minute. At this point, we should save our work. File, save. So we'll get the camera set up next. Roughly get your viewport about there. Then press Control, Alt and Zero on the number pad and the camera will automatically move to that position. Just change a couple of the camera settings. Click on the camera. Hop back into object mode if you can't see the camera. Click on the camera, we'll just set the focal length to 28 millimeters. Gives us a bit more of a wide angle camera. And then if you want to move the camera about here, a really good shortcut is the shift and tilde key. And we'll just use the keys W, A, S, D to move in and out. You can also just move the camera to just the right place. We'll move these three back into the scene collection. Everything in here, we're going to move to a new collection. So select it all with holding down shift and click. Press M to move it. New collection, we'll call it building. Just keeps everything a bit tidier. With the glass, we're going to press shift D, duplicate it. And right click it so it doesn't move. This is, these are going to be the glass pillars. And what we're going to do, we're going to add a modifier. the wireframe modifier. We're going to delete this material, new material, we'll call it pillar. Just select the color to be fairly a darkish gray. Hopping into render mode, you can see now we've got some nice dark lines just to separate the glass panels. Right, next we're gonna to get to the fun stage, which is adding materials and decorating the set. To do this, we need to Install Blender Kit if you don't already have it. You can get Blender Kit for free. Just go to blenderkit.com, click download Blender Kit and follow the instructions. So Blender Kit's a fantastic free resource. It's got loads of models, materials, HDLRs for free. Now you'll see we've got the Blender Kit tab down here. So click on materials. If you click this little eye that toggles on this preview at the top. So just search for concrete for a start. 
So we've got concrete tile material. So just check when you're importing them. Make sure this is set to append, otherwise you won't be able to edit any of the models or materials. So you just click and drag, drop it where you want it to go. To quickly add this concrete to all of the other materials, just press shift. Just click on all the other materials, all the other places you want it to go. And make sure you select the one with the material on last. Press control L and then just press link materials. If you get some strange uh, results with the mapping, tab into edit mode, press U and do a smart UV project. We're going to add some different tiles for this floor. So search for tiles. Really you can pick anything you like. They're all great. I'm going to pick this one called concrete tiles polished. Next thing we're going to add some models. Click on models. Now I'm just, you can add in whatever you want here. So all you do is type in what you're looking for. If you set it search filters, you can click free first. So it comes up with the free models at the beginning. And all you do to add a model is just click and hold your left mouse button and drag it into position to adjust the models once they're down. If you click on any of them, click on just a part of the model. If you look in the outliner, you can press your period key on your number pad and that will jump straight to the part. Usually all these models from Blender Kit have an empty which everything's parented to. So if you click the top link, which is usually the empty, then you can usually rotate that R, R and then Z to rotate on the Z axis. And if you look from the top view, you can just press G and just move the empty to where you want the object in the picture. Now I'm just going to quickly add a load more objects into my scene. Okay, so I've just added some objects from Blender Kit in. We've got a couch, a chair, a table, a carpet, some whiskey, and a book. The next thing we're going to do is add some lighting. So we switch to render view. I'm going to render this in cycles. Now I am using K-Cycles, which I do recommend. It is paid, but I think it's really worth it. Super fast to render, twice as fast as the stock cycles render. Plus it's got some great post effects that you can do and I'll show you those at the end. So we start by clicking on a light. We change this to a sunlight. Strength of one. In fact, we might up that a bit, 10. And now we're gonna move the light around. We're gonna, in fact, we'll warm the light up first. Click on the color, we'll make it orange. And what we'll do Press 7 for top view, G to grab, and we can just change the rotation of our light uh, either using the R key or using these sliders here. So we keep the light fairly low. I'm just going to rotate it a little bit round. Let's just grab it so it's over there. And we might tweak this again in a minute. Press 0 for your back for your camera view. We need to add in a ceiling. So we'll select the floor, shift D, press Z to constrain on the Z axis. We'll just move this up, pop it on the ceiling. And we'll do the same with this floor as well. Click on the floor, press shift D, Z to move it up. And we'll just have it so it lands over there. About like that. So the next thing we're going to do is add a nice scenery to look out. Now you could do this in several ways. You could use a HDRI, but in this case, we're going to actually add an image in. So you could do this by going to Unsplash. These are all unsplash.com. They're all freely usable images that we can use. Uh, I searched for cliff top sunset. And if you scroll down, I found this rather nice one here of somewhere in New Zealand. So press down over for free. Go back to Blender, File, Import, Images as Planes. Click on the image. Oh, by the way, if you don't have Images as Planes, um, it's a, an add-on you can add on in the Preferences. Just go to Edit Preferences and then search for it. Import, Export, Images as Planes. It's built into Blender. Just make sure it's switched on. 
So click on the image. What we're going to do is in the material setting, before we import it, we're just going to set this to emit. This basically means we don't need to worry about lighting this image. It's got its own light built in. So now if we would just press 7 for top view, G to grab. I'm just going to hide this ceiling for a minute so we can see inside. So what you do with your painting, you want it to be parallel to the camera. So if you look at the camera, this line here means the painting needs to be parallel with it. So we're just going to rotate the photograph to make sure it's parallel with the camera. Uh, G to grab, S to scale, it needs to be pretty big. Press zero to go back into your camera view and we can just press G to grab it and just frame it. I'm just gonna add the ceiling back in. Okay, a little bit more tweaking. I've added in a lamp in this, the ceiling. I've added in a, a guy for a bit of scale. One final thing I'm going to do to show you, it's a lovely little trick to add some depth to your render. I'm going to press Shift A, I'm going to add in a cube. Seven for top view. I'm just going to scale it up a bit. Grab it, just pop it in the middle of your scene. Back to zero, back to camera view. It's just blocked everything. So if you look at the cube, we're going to use this cube and we're going to make it into a volume cube. So we're going to add a new material. We'll call it fog. So where he says principal BSDF, just press disconnect that. So its surface should now say none. But where it says volume, we're going to add a principled volume shader. Its density of one is way too thick, so 0 0.02 might be just about right. Maybe that's even slightly too dense, 0 0.01. And it just adds a touch of atmosphere into the render and brings it all together nicely. Okay, that looks pretty good for a first render. I'm going to do a few tweaks in K-Cycles just to give this a bit more interest. So K-Cycles, as I said, is not free with Blender. K-Cycles is a paid add-on which I've bought and I really recommend it. Um, it's got these brilliant post effects built in. So I'm just going to quickly show you these now. So if you click on the lens, we can actually add in a vignette, which is kind of a darkening of the corners. We can do something called tone mapping, which lets you sort of adjust the colors. So, you know, if you want it to be a bit warmer, you can just increase the white balance this way. Or if you want it to be a bit cooler, you can increase, decrease the white balance. I'm just going to up the, con the contrast just very slightly. Uh, you can also add in some flares, which are great if used carefully. A little bit of glare, a little bit of anamorphic. And let's render that out and see what it looks like. And that render took 13 seconds. Uh, and because you always ask, um, I'll give you a quick rundown of the specs of my computer. It's an i5 processor, not very new, about four years old. I've got 16 gig of RAM and an NVIDIA 3080 graphics card, which is why it's so quick. I might do a few more tweaks and then I'll just show you what an animation could look like.